Hello, my name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist at HEC. And in this advanced module, we're going to take a closer look at one of the processes that Cameron talked about in his lecture on the flow stage curve. In particular, we're going to look at sediment transport and how sediment deposition and erosion, particularly deposition, can affect your future without project and your future with project flow stage curves, and also how it can affect the uncertainty around those curves. And then we'll look at some of the other curves in the FDA analysis that you've learned about this week that sediment process can affect. And this is how it plays out in our flood damage calculations. And so this is a standard RAS result. RAS results flow from upstream to downstream, from right to left. And this purple line here, this purple line is the top of levee. And so if water exceeds this purple line, you get wet. The blue lines are the as-built condition, the 1% and the 4% event. And what you can see is that the 1% event never exceeds the levee. This was designed in a fixed bed world to work really well. And so, you know, no one gets wet. But after four years of deposition, now the water surface profiles are the red lines. What you'll see here is not only is the 1% event substantially over the levee, but the 4% event, the, uh, the artist formerly known as the 25-year flood, gets people wet after just four years of deposition, which will certainly reduce the BC ratio of this project. But this happens in a lot of our projects. I actually think deposition is one of the primary, if not the primary failure mode of core flood risk management projects. And so the, the new sedimentation manual includes a new chapter, chapter 11, which is called Sediment Considerations for Risk and Uncertainty Studies. And so if you are in a morphologically dynamic system, if your system kind of departs from equilibrium, if it has a tendency towards deposition or erosion, or if you're doing something to the channel that's going to put it outside of an equilibrium regime, so it will either have to deposit or erode to kind of get back to its original morphology, you probably want to get a draft of this and take a look at it. But one of the things we did is we identified the four curves in the FDA workflow that could be significantly affected by sediment. You know, the first one is kind of obvious, and that's reservoirs. You know, reservoirs turn a river into a lake, and therefore they, they tend to induce deposition. And as you deposit sediment, you reduce the flood risk benefits of the reservoir. And so the relationship between your unregulated discharge and your regulated discharge curve will change over time. Maybe the second most severe impact on flood risk management of sedimentation processes is how erosion affects your fragility curve. All of the other processes, we're talking about how deposition will vulture conveyance that you need for your benefits. But what if you erode? What if you have a levied system and it erodes and erodes at the toe of the levee? Well, that's going to introduce new failure planes through your levee, and it's going to affect your fragility curve. It's actually going to affect your fragility curve in a deleterious way. And so that's another way that sediment can affect these curves. And then finally, and this one's kind of minor, but it's worth mentioning, is that sediment can affect your stage damage curve. And so you have a standard stage damage curve, but if you have a lot of sediment, if you have high sediment loads or you know, perhaps mud, or, mud and debris, that's going to cause additional damage. Um, mud and debris can increase the momentum and cause more damage to structures. And mud and debris cleanup can sometimes be a large portion of the damages. And so that will just kind of increase your stage damage curve. But because the effect of sediment load and the trigger for a mud or debris flow can be nonlinear, it can be stochastic, it's going to also sometimes have a nonlinearity, and it's also going to have some uncertainty around it. All right, but... But by far, the most common curve that's impacted by sedimentation processes is the flow stage curve. And so as your flow increases, your stage increases, but that relationship can be affected by sediment transport. The idea is that at different flows, you're going to get different stages. And there's usually an inflection point at the bank, but your stage discharge curve usually looks something like that. And so you could imagine if you get deposition in your channel, these stages will be higher and your stage discharge curve will increase. Now that process tends to be monotonic, which just means kind of one directional, which means that your future with and without project conditions will have a higher stage for a given flow than your current. Now there is a more insidious version of this process, and let, let's assume that we have levees. You know, we're gonna build levees here. 
And so over time, we're going to get deposition inside of our levees. And so that's going to steal some of the conveyance from a much smaller conveyance area and increase the stage more. And so a really attractive potential fix would be to raise the levees. But because this process is monotonic, because it'll continue to deposit over the course of the project life, what sometimes happens is you get deposition between the levees that's exacerbated because it's only depositing in the channel, it's not depositing out over the floodplain, so that at the end of your project life, your thaw wig is actually higher than your floodplain. This is a condition that we call a perched channel, and it's pretty dangerous because you, know, you are introducing new failure planes, new failure modes, and exacerbating the fragility curve at the end of your project, you've actually introduced residual risk that wasn't there before. And so one of the questions we have to ask is, is the future with project condition actually going to induce risk due to some of these processes? All right, so the sediment transport will have a non-stationary or monotonic effect. It will increase the stage associated with future flow. So your future with project and your future without project conditions will both be affected. That future curve will be higher than the present curve, but it will also affect the uncertainty because we don't actually know what the sediment future holds. Um, it's going to be tied to hydrology. There's a lot of what we call aleatory or natural variability uncertainty, but there's also a lot of epistemic uncertainty. There's a lot of the sediment processes that we don't fully understand or you know, we just don't have the budget or time to do the studies that we need to do. So both of these brands of uncertainties conspire to introduce some pretty significant bounds around your flow stage curve if you're in a dynamic system. And Two additional things. One is that your uncertainty tends to grow with higher flows in your flow stage curve, and it tends to be higher in the future because we don't actually know what time series we're going to get there. But then there's one other thing about this cartoon that I, that I did on purpose is the uncertainty around the future flow stage curve is asymmetric. That is, it has a high tail. And that's because sediment transport processes are nonlinear. Let me explain how that goes. And so here's the very simplest sediment transport model, kind of a heuristic that you could think about, is that you know, sediment transport is approximately proportional to the square of the flow. Is that true? Absolutely not. Is it true enough? Kind of, at least for this thought experiment that we want to do. And so what I've done here is I've just made the very simplest possible deposition sediment model in Excel um, using this equation. And what's going to happen is over the 50-year project life, we're going to deposit. And because sediment transport is nonlinear, those episodes of deposition are really going to be driven by a few major events. And so here we've got kind of three or four major events and a few minor events that give us most of our deposition. And so we get an average bed change of about three. But then what I did is I just made that model stochastic. Instead of just running the historic flow series through, I did a you know, standard kind of bootstrap stochastic hydrology and ran 50 realizations and said, hey, what is the final result of these 50 realizations? And what you'll see is that not only is there substantial spread around the deposition, but it's asymmetrical. It has a long high tail because an asymmetrical uncertainty distribution is just one of the features of a nonlinear process. But then there's another thing is that it actually really matters when these events happen. And so here I've just reproduced one of these plots where over time we have a change in stage due to sediment transport deposition, and it's really driven by a few major events that are pretty well spaced over time. And in this exercise, I want us to imagine that there's a significant change in damages or benefits at this stage which is not actually what happens. That's, it's not usually a threshold. It's usually you know, more of a distribution. But let, for this exercise, let's think about that. And now think about what would happen if all of these events happened earlier. Well, what happens is we end up crossing our threshold and losing our benefits earlier in the project life, which again will, would affect our BC ratio. Now what would happen if instead they happened later?
well, we don't end up with these kind of deleterious sediment effects in our cost-benefit ratio until the very end of the project life. And so kind of in the limit, you can imagine that there are these bounds that determine the possible temporal range of the maximum sediment impact, which occurs all during the second half of the project life. And so the timing of these events really matters as well. And so as just kind of an illustration of that, and this is all from a paper that I wrote with Will Lehman and Dan Perdall at Sedhide. And we're gonna just take this red line and we're going to reorder it to, um, from largest to smallest or from smallest to largest to show you kind of the limits of the temporal impact that sediment can have as to when you lose benefits. So if you say lose benefits at this stage, you can see there's a pretty dramatic difference in how that will play out in your project life and your BC ratio. And so that's a complicated problem, something you're probably not gonna come up with a closed form solution for. And so anytime we're concerned about the impacts of uncertainty on future results, and it's kind of a complicated problem that would really benefit from multiple simulations, we use the Watt, the Watershed Analysis Tool. And so that's why this paper is with Will Lehman. He's in charge of the, the Watt. And so what we did is we hooked up the 1D sediment transport model in HTC RAS, with the stochastic bootstrap hydrologic realization engine in HEC Watt, and we ran 300 realizations of future deposition and erosion in a mobile bed framework to look at, you know, at the end of the project life, what is the portfolio of bed changes that we could be looking at to actually develop some quantitative uncertainty associated with the sediment dynamics into the end of project life. And so you know, this advanced module has just kind of looked at one particular aspect of uncertainty that can be more or less important depending on how dynamic your system is, that you know, how sediment transport affects the flow stage curve. There's a number of ways that it can do that, and it can be minor or it can be relatively dramatic. And so sediment transport will often affect your flow stage curve, not only with the kind of directional monotonic non-stationarity effect on your future curve by raising the flow stage relationship in your future conditions, but also by creating uncertainty bounds that not only grow with flow, but also grow in time.